Bregui, Kadu Dundagi comes to you every Sunday at this time from the Roman Catholic Diocese of Banjo with me, Father Peter Lopez. Today is Universal Day for Prayer for Vocations. It is also known as Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter. We join the whole world in praying for vocations, vocations to the priesthood, the religious life, and also the married life. Uh, we would like, first of all, to thank God for the gift of missionaries who came to this diocese many, many years ago. We are celebrating the centenary of our cathedral. By then, there were only a few Gambian priests. We remember Father Sane, Father Charles Mende, and Father Job, uh, all of blessed memory. There were among a few Gambians who gave their lives for the spread of the good news. In thanking God for the gift of the missionaries, we also thank God for those Gambians who we are bold enough, especially their parents, to give their children uh, to the church. We are what we are today thanks to the great work of the missionaries who brought to the Gambia uh, the word of God. And today we can say the Gambia has uh, grown, the word of God has spread, and Christ is all over this country. Those of us who have now been given that mantle of leadership, it is now incumbent on all of us to carry this great missionary zeal to preach Christ near and far. We pray for our seminarians and we pray for novices and all those who are in formation that God who has called them will help them to answer this wonderful call of becoming priests and religious. We are going to talk to Father Moses Drame. Father Moses Drame is the vocations director. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to be here and uh, can you tell us what is it all about uh, Vocations Sunday? Thank you. An opportunity to enlighten our viewers that today as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter, annually it is set aside as a Sunday in which we are all invited to pray for vocations. Vocations to the priesthood and the religious life consecrated life, so to speak. The church gives us the opportunity during the season of Easter as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ that it is also important that we pray for an increase in uh, the priesthood and also the religious life. If we take our minds back to sacred scriptures where Jesus himself gives or praise to God that may the Lord of the harvest send more laborers to his vineyard. And this is what we are all encouraged during this Sunday or on this Sunday to pray that the Lord will send more laborers to the vineyard so that there will be an increase in the, the priesthood and the religious life. If we have many priests then uh, the celebration of the sacraments will not be a problem for the Christian community. They would have people who would lead them in the celebrations of the word and the sacraments. Because he says, without the Eucharist, how can we live? How can the Christian community live without the Eucharist? Therefore, the priests are very much important in the celebration of the sacraments and also the word of God. And that is why today the church sets it aside so that we as a people, as a family of God, we would concentrate on praying and encouraging vocations to the priesthood and the religious life. Uh, as the rector of the seminary here in uh, Lamin, what is always special for you and uh, the seminarians? Annually, when we celebrate vocations week towards the Sunday, there are so many activities set aside. And uh, many a time we used to hear symposium being organized, workshops, and also entertainment in the form of sports, football, for the priests versus the seminarians, likewise novices versus the sisters. And this year is going to take a different dimension because I'm uh, 
there has been this arrangement between the diocese of Banjul and the archdiocese of Dakar. And annual, um, every other year, there is an exchange visit. So this year, it happens that we are joining our, con our counterparts in Senegal to celebrate this vocation Sunday. And for the junior seminarians and the novices and aspirants, it's an opportunity for them to interact with people of the same faith in formation and see what happens in Senegal and what they can learn from them and what they too, the Senegalese counterparts, can also learn from us in the Gambia. So this is how we are going to celebrate it this year. Hopefully by um, Friday we'll be leaving and also on Sunday we will be in Dakar with a pontifical high mass being celebrated by um, the cardinal in Popongin, to which all the faithful of the Archdiocese of Senegal will be in attendance. And I, I hope you are going to have a very good uh, interactions with the, the priests, religious, and also the seminarians in Senegal. Eh? That is our hope and expectation that they will all come in their numbers. And for us, it is um, a learning experience. We believe that that this Archdiocese of Senegal has done a lot in terms of promoting vocations to the priesthood and the religious life. So we're going there to learn a lot from them and also share with them the little that we are doing here in the Diocese of Banjul. And I believe with even the little we're doing can also be a source of inspiration to many young men and women in Senegal. Father Moses Trami, I want to thank you so much for granting us this piece of interview. Uh, but, but then before we end the, this little conversation, how will you recommend the life of a priest or religious to lay faith? I would continue, as I've been doing, encouraging parents to allow their young ones male or female who are interested in discerning their vocation to the priesthood or, or the religious life. It is important because when uh, a priest is ordained or someone dedicates her life as a religious, makes her first profession or her final profession, it is a sign that the Christian community has matured because it's a sign that a fruit has actually been uh, realized from within the community, a fruit manifesting the faith of the community. And if it is within a parish, it's a sign of grace, it's a sign of blessing. Likewise, when the child comes from a home. So encourage your young ones who want to aspire to the religious life or the pursuit to come and see. That is what we say, come and see. Let them come to the seminary. Let them also go to the convents and see how people out there are living. And if they feel that that is their place, we only need to encourage them, pray for them. It is God who will do the rest. Let us only do our best and leave the rest to God. And I'm, I'm sure if you begin to encourage the young ones, you would begin to see the continuous steady increase of vocations in our diocese. Father Moses, uh, thank you so much and I wish you a very, very happy vocation Sunday and to all the seminarians here in the General Seminary in Lamin. Thank you and we wish you all a blessed and a spirit-filled Sunday. God bless. There are different stages in becoming a religious sister. Uh, if a young girl is interested, the first thing the young girl should do is to go and meet a sister, one of the sisters, like one that she is used to, talk with the sister, and then the sister will forward this, her request to one of those who are in charge. There is always a committee. We call it a vocation committee. And the vocation committee, one, one of the sisters or those in the vocation committee will go and meet the girl, visit the girl's family, and they will encourage the girl depending on which class the girl is. We have the stage that we call aspirancy, and we have that in Rivia Home in London Corner, Serakunda. And that's where they start, and they start when they are in grade 10. We accept them there when they are in grade 10. 
And before they are accepted, they write a request. 